The eclipse of 2017 was a significant warning, but my guess says the April 8th, 2024 eclipse, even more urgent. It's good that it's got everybody's attention, but you are seeing things in the Word of God that few people are seeing. What is a ring of fire? The ring of fire is the way that this thing actually looks. And so not every eclipse is a ring of fire. The enemies of Israel that surrounded Israel beginning October the 7th, they call themselves the ring of fire. The current signs in the heavens communicate the imminent return of Messiah. God is saying, I'm not playing. I need you to be on this side of the line. We need to declare our allegiance to him. Something is going on. You know, there's a word that's going from the Lord that's coming out to everybody. And a lot of people don't know how to discern that word. I'm not dreading anything. The sky is not falling. The kingdom is coming. Oh, welcome, Holy Spirit. Troy Brewer, I want you to tell us what we must do right now. One of the things that I see, Sid, is that, I mean, people are really fearful about this event. And I see the National Guard is being let out. Schools are being closed. I mean, here locally, all the schools are being closed because of this eclipse. And like, people are really concerned and people are paying attention to this. It's good that it's got everybody's attention. But you need to know that there is a specific word that is in this, and it's this. Jesus is coming back soon and you have no other hope. You need to be looking unto Jesus. We need to be looking for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to declare our allegiance to him, which, which is what the fear of the Lord is all about. The fear of the Lord is when we love what God loves, we hate what God hates, and we get with God's program. This is an American word. This is for the United States. This is specifically, this eclipse is a United States word. The first one only touched the United States, mm -hmm. and that was the first time that that, is, and that has ever happened since 1776, mm -hmm. since the birth of our nation. Now, the eclipse of 2017 was a significant warning, but what makes the April 8th 2024 eclipse even more urgent. Well, the April 8th um, eclipse that has taken place is the second part of a two-part message. The first part was in 2017, the Great American Eclipse, and then this second part finishes up what the first one said. So if I can just unpack that a little Please. bit, brother, because we have to know this. Um, number one, if you're not sure that this second sign is God Almighty speaking, you need to look no further than the dates. On the Gregorian calendar, it happens on April the 8th. And if you look at those numbers, Sid, 4, 8, Exodus 4, verse 8 is when God tells Moses, if they do not believe you because of the first sign, they will believe you because of the second sign. And again, brother, that is April the 8th or Exodus four, eight. So even the numbers line up with the word of God. So the significance of the second one has to do with the understanding of the first one. And if I can unpack that, if it's okay, sir, Please. I'll be happy to do that. Um, the first one happened on the first of Elul, which was seven years ago. And it was a one hour and 33 minute event. Um, the totality of the eclipse was only 70 miles wide, much smaller than this one, by the way, which has the largest, the widest totality of any eclipse that has ever hit the United States before, which is a, a very scientific phenomenon, which is a, also a huge prophetic sign. But the first one entered in through Salem, Oregon, and as it crossed over the United States of America, it went over seven cities called Salem. It just the totality, which was only 70 miles wide, Brother Sid, it went over seven cities called Salem. And what did that speak of? It spoke of seven years of peace. And this was this was seven years ago. On April the 8th, we have the next great American eclipse. And it enters into a place called Eagle Pass, Texas. And then it crosses over the United States. And as it does, this one, my friend, it makes a kind of an X, which, of course, is the Tav in the ancient Hebrew, and that means a prophetic sign. If you look at the two of them together, it looks like an X across our nation. So the significance of all of these things uh, tells me that Jesus is coming back soon, and it's a lot sooner than, than, than what you think. So that should also get our attention and that we understand that this is a huge prophetic sign. So when it went across these seven cities that was called Salem, it ended 
The last place, it left Charlotte, and I believe you know something about Charlotte. I and the know last all about Charlotte. That's where we originate from. So you, you, you guys will remember that on the day that that actually took place, the last place that it went out, brother, was Fort Sumter. And Fort Sumter is where the Civil War began. It was the first shot of the Civil War of the United States mm. happened at Fort Sumter. It was where the Civil War began. So that was, we're going to call that seven years ago. On April the 8th, we have the next Great American Eclipse. It enters in at Eagle Pass, Texas. Eagle Pass, Texas is where the last Confederate soldier actually buried the uh, last Confederate flag. That's, and his name is Shelby, and that happens at Shelby Park. Shelby Park is in all of our headlines today where invaders are invading our nation at Shelby Park. And it's like, well, what is that? It's General Shelby, the last Confederate person, the last person that 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 stood for slavery, the last person that stood against America. And so the first one ended where the Civil War began. The second one begins where the Civil War ended. And God Almighty says this, be unified or see your nation divided. Why should we know about supernatural signs in the heavens? Well, mostly because it's the heart of King Jesus and it's the voice of the Lord, my friend. And we as a people of God have a tremendous responsibility to hear God speak and to heed his word. And one of the ways that God speaks is through the heavens, you know, going all the way back to uh, all the way back to the book of Genesis, when the Lord created the sun and the moon and the stars on the fourth day, this is Genesis 1:14. he said, he said, well, you know, I created this and placed them within the firmament as signs, seasons, days, and years. So the first reason why God Almighty created the sun and the moon and stars was actually for signs. And then we know that Jesus himself declared there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And he was speaking in present future tense. And so that means that he was actually talking to our generation as well. And he know we we know that whenever we see the convergence of God speaking so many um, through so many things, and then the heavens being shaken, like what does it mean for the heavens to be shaken? Uh, Joel three sixteen says that it means that God is speaking through the heavens. It means the voice of God is within the heavenly realm. When you begin to see these things, not only is it our, not only is it our responsibility to know that God is speaking, but it's also our great responsibility to understand what God is speaking. And if we don't take these things seriously, we could very much miss our day of visitation. And so, no, we have to be watchful. Now, for those that aren't that knowledgeable in the Bible, explain mm -hmm. what happened at Nineveh and why you say that. Well, I'm so happy to because this is so important because the prophet, you know, whenever Jesus was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees, they were saying, we need an additional sign. And he's like, I've, I've given you so many signs. And they're like, yes, but we require an additional sign. And Jesus said, there will, mean, there will be no additional sign given to you. But then he stops and he says, except for that of Jonah the prophet. Now we, as Western Christians, we tend to look at that meaning, okay, that means that the sign will be that he'll be in, in the belly of hell for three days, the way that Jonah was in the belly of the fish. But that was not how they understood what the sign of Jonah the prophet was. Jo the sign of Jonah the prophet was understood in the days of Jonah as a solar eclipse. And the reason why um, that that was the sign of Jonah the prophet is because in 763 BC, on the first of Elul, is exactly the day down to the actual 24 hours that, that brother Jonah stepped into Nineveh and said, you have 40 days. You have 40 days and that's it to, to repent. Well, if you look, and the reason why we know that it was June the 15th of 763 BC is because the great Assyrian eclipse happened on that day. So whenever Jonah walked into Nineveh and said, you've got 40 days, there was also an eclipse that happened and it, got, it brought great fear upon the nation and they actually repented. So it was known at the time of King Jesus that the sign of Jonah the prophet is that the sun would go dark. And indeed it did when he was on the cross. They saw that happen. We know that this is the sign of Jonah the prophet. And what does it speak of? It speaks of this, repent. And God Almighty is speaking and saying this, it's not too late, you can turn. And it's up to the body of Jesus. I love what, you know, Brother Mario Murillo, I heard him say this years ago. He said, he said, the church can live without America, but America cannot live without the church. And that is so true for this time. Our, our lights this, will go out without the church. There'll be exactly, no light. <laughs> there will be no light. And, and brother, you're so right. I mean, America depends upon the body of Jesus being the body of Jesus. 
And this is a word not only to the church, but it's also a word actually specifically to our nation. Brother Sid, whenever God speaks through the platform of the sun, he's always speaking to the nations. When God speaks through the platform of the moon, he's always speaking to his covenant people. So it's like, what is that? It's, it's either Israel or it's the body of Jesus or, or, or it's the church. The sun is always seen prophetically as masculine and the moon is always seen prophetically as feminine. The moon has a 28 day cycle exactly the way that a woman has a 28 day cycle. And so we in the Western world, we use a sun calendar. And those of course, as you know, in the Hebrew or Israeli world, they use a moon calendar. So when God is speaking through the sun, he's talking to the nations. And that's why God Almighty brought the great Assyrian eclipse in 763 BC on the day that Jonah moved into the Assyrian nation and spoke a word and said, I'm serious, you got 40 days to repent. That's the kind of word that has taken place with this great event and the heavens are declaring the glory of God. You are seeing things in the world, in the word of God that few people are seeing. Uh, but you've been studying these heavenly signs for many years. Perhaps you can give us one or two hints or revelations for us to understand the heavenly language a little bit better. Yeah, I, I sure can. And I love this. I love this whole conversation because because we think we think that um, understanding that God Almighty speaks through the heavens is a demonic thing. And sadly, uh, the whole demonic world has stolen those things. And the Bible says in Romans 120 through 124, it actually says that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations and professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And so we cannot do that. We have to be looking for Jesus. But the understanding of this is that everything that is in the Bible, those stories were written in the heavens for our benefit before we ever had a Bible. So whenever God got ready to show Abraham the seriousness of his covenant and what was gonna happen with his seed, he mm. took him outside and he showed him the stars. Right, because the yes. plan of redemption is in the constellations. The plan of the the plan of redemption is in the names of the stars. The Bible says that God names the stars. He says He says I have named them twice, and then it also says that He numbered them. So it's like okay, they're numbered, they're named, and if you look up the ancient Hebrew names of all those stars, they all declare amazing things. There are eighty eight constellations in the heavens that God that God actually put in our firmament. And so our firmament means our field of view. And so the, the eclipse is another example of God strategically placing these things within our firmament and that when the sun and the moon come together from our perspective, only from our perspective, they both look the same size. Even though the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, it's also 400 times further away than the moon is from us. So that when they come together, they look exactly the same. But of course they're not. But that's him placing it within our firmament. The Bible says in Psalms 19, again, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day it utters speech and night unto night it reveals knowledge so that there is no language where their voice is not heard. So what you find is when you when you look at these constellations, which say it's Virgo, well, what is that? It is the promise of the seed of a woman. And the star that represents her belly button is called the branch. And it's like, hmm. that's one of the messianic, one of the great messianic names of the Messiah it was, is this, behold, I send my servant the branch. So here is a virgin woman that has a seed within her belly and that is impossible, except for in Genesis, God Almighty tells Eve, he says, Eve, I'm going to put a great war between your seed and the serpent seed. And it's the promise, the first of all messianic promises is the seed of the woman. Well, the first of all those constellations is Virgo. So it's exactly as the Bible. And then it also ends with Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, coming back in full vengeance to rule and reign forever and ever and ever. Well, why do they say the same things? Because the author of the heavens and the Bible is the same person. It's Jesus himself. What I need you to do, you said that these two eclipses that you've been talking about are a two-part message. Yes, sir. Spell out clearly, what is that two-part message? The two-part message is this. Jesus is coming back soon. 
And he's when I say he's coming back soon, he's coming back soon, soon, soon. And the rapture of the church is a present reality that we need to be watchful for. He says in the first eclipse, which happened seven years ago, it, it, this, is an, this is a one hour and 33 minute event to the second. He says, Psalms 133, oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, right? He's saying the body of Jesus needs to be unified in looking for the return of King Jesus himself. And he promises us seven years of peace. The second one happens, it enters in at Eagle Pass, Texas. Eagle Pass, Texas is where the last Confederate soldier actually buried the uh, last Confederate flag. God Almighty does not want our nation divided. He wants the people of God to actually repent. He wants the church to be the church. Where they cross is in Illinois. What is that? It's the land of Lincoln. That's what that is. Like, wow, okay, so I need to pay attention to that. Right there where it crosses is one town. And you know what that town is? It's called Rapture rapture indiana the promise of king jesus is this i'm coming back well where will we gather where the eagles gather that's what jesus said where the eagles gather what is the place where this next one enters in at it is called eagle pass texas it speaks of the promise of the rapture of the church and that we as the body of jesus need to look unto king jesus for all things we are the only nation in the world that advertises we are one nation under God. The threat that is coming against us is to be a divided nation if we do not repent and put Jesus first. Our hope is in the return of King Jesus, and we as the people of God must stand for the values of the Word of God and be looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'll tell you this, brother, on April the 8th, we are having a baptism service. We are calling we are, we are calling our entire tribe together to say we as the people of God unite and we declare that God Almighty is our God, that Yahweh God is God, that Yeshua HaMashiach is the Messiah and we are his, we are his people. And we stand in this nation the way that Jonah stood in the nation of Nineveh on that day when the sun went dark and he said, you got 40 days. God Almighty is declaring the clock is ticking. We cannot live like it's 1950 or 1960. The days are short and the world clock only has this much left. So what should the people of God do? We should be the people of God. We should love what God loves and we should hate what God hates. One of the words you said, I want you to explain it. We must be unified. Yes. What do you mean by that? Well, there, sadly, there has been such a tribal spirit within the American body of Jesus. It's been a worldwide thing as well. But And so he's calling us into unity. And unity for us means Christ is the head. So if we are the body and if we are unified as the body, we can only be unified if Christ is the head. We are the one nation, brother, that, that says we are one nation under God, that God is our head. Friends, we have no other plan B, we have no other plan C, but to put all of our game into the trust of the Lord Jesus Christ as God's mouthpiece. And this is a deal. We cannot be attacking each other and standing against each other, joining the media mob in, in critical, worthless things and fighting each other. We have to unite together as one body with Christ as the head and love each other and lay down our lives for each other as Jesus has commanded us to do. Uh, my producer is saying the ring of fire. I'm not even sure what that is. Well, you know, the ring of fire is is the way that this thing actually looks. And so it has a ring of fire around it. And so not every eclipse is a ring of fire. And what is amazing is- But, but I what think does a ring of fire mean to you prophetically? Well, number, it, it means two things. Number one, for the people of God, it means that God will be a wall of fire around them and he will be the glory in the midst of them. But it also means this too. The enemies of Israel that surrounded Israel beginning October the 7th, they call themselves the ring of fire. And God is saying judgment is coming against his enemies and the enemies of Israel do not join them. And you know what's sad? What's sad is many of us behind pulpits in America are so afraid that people are going to disagree with us politically or we'll be accused of being political or whatever if we stand with Israel and our voices are not being heard. And I want to tell you, the Lord is tired of that and he's shaking things up right now. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Are you going to be on God's team or are you going to be on another team? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this 
April 8th event means you'd better take it very seriously as to which team you are on. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm standing with Israel. And that is a big part of this prophetic message that is in the heavens today. Are you standing with Israel? Are you standing with the God of Israel? I have to, I have true confession time. Uh, our ministry puts, puts out a medallion. It happens to be the symbol of Israel. Mm. It's the menorah. Uh, and I've actually had the thought, don't wear it because they're really coming against Jewish people. And as you know, Troy, I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus. And I thought, no, God's going to protect me. And I, awesome. I boldly, <laughs> I'll even open my shirt so people can see it. <laughs> you know, I'm not even Jewish and I just I actually just got back from South Africa yesterday. I was in I was in Qatar uh, about uh, 16 hours ago and Qatar does not stand with Israel. I'm talking and there's other nations that don't. I have a friend of mine that was there and I saw him and he is a Jewish believer. And he and he told me, he said, Troy, I've been convicted because I was not wearing my kippah and I wear it everywhere I go. And I took it off here because I'm afraid for this. And I told him, I said, let me wear it. We'll both wear it together and we'll walk through this thing. You're talking <laughs> so, about provoking the Jew to jealousy, Troy. <laughs> well, of course, you wear a wear yarmulke. It. I see you're wearing it right there now. <laughs> yarmulke's the head, the, uh, the, the thing that we Jews put over our head uh, to yeah. protect us. And a lot of Jews have a yarmulke under their baseball cap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, no, it's, it's just very important, man, that, you know, I, I'm telling Jewish people every time I run into them, I was with a whole, I ran into a bunch of Jewish people that was in Uganda. I was in Uganda last week and I ran what into them. What are Jews and, doing in Uganda? Man, <laughs> you know what? They are doing amazing things. They're doing amazing things. I was so impressed with them. And we were out, we were out in the community doing our thing. And there were some Jewish people there that was actually, they were like, well, while we're here, if, if, you know, we hear that people do outreaches here and whatnot, we'd like to feed some people. We'd like to help some people. And so they were, they were not believing. They were not messianic believers. They were just Jewish people. And so they joined with us and they helped us do outreaches. They helped us feed people. And uh, I told them, I said, you need to know this. Not everybody in the world hates you. There are Christians that are standing with you all over the world. And we live in Texas and we stand with you and brother, we love you and we appreciate you. And the, the guy's wife just started crying. And she's like, thank you for saying that. And I'm like, man, if the body of Jesus is not going to stand, there's nobody else coming. When did you find this out? When did it dawn on you that all these little signs like the eclipse or uh, things that are strange in the, in the weather, have have significance behind it. When did that dawn on you? Well, it's a it's a strange thing for us because we're just now getting caught up to it. But as I began to read, well, to answer your question, it was in the late '80s. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I began to read the Word of God, and I got saved in May of '86, and I was already a part of the astronomy club. I, I in high school, I'd been a big part of the astronomy club, and. I love the heavens. And then when I opened up the Bible, I saw that God was always speaking through the heavens. And I was like, uh, I don't think that, I don't think that we have actually caught up with that, but that was over 40 years ago. And since that time, the body of Jesus has been catching up with it. People are starting to heed because you can't ignore it. You can't deny it. And it's happening. We literally have a front row seat for end time signs, miracles, and wonders as the word of God says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show his handiwork. And day unto day, it reveals knowledge and not in a night. Um, it speaks and there is no language where their voice is not heard. And so uh, this has always been a part of my walk, Brother Sid. It's, it's, it's always been right here in the word and I've always been interested in it. I want you to pray for us to fulfill our complete destiny written in our book of life. You have a book of life. I have a book of life. The viewers have a book of life. Pray that we do this. Well, I, want, I want to fulfill my full destiny in my book of life. I know you want to, and I know you want to. Would you pray? I will, my friend. Father God, sir, I pray in the name of King Jesus that we would fulfill everything, God, that you have prophesied over our life. Every hope and every, every, hope and every dream that you have ever had for us as your people. King Jesus, we have a yes in our spirit. And Father God, sir, we repent for trying to go any other way. 
God, we repent for trying to make anything else happen. Father God, sir, you are our God and we are your people and we are totally dependent upon you. We say during this resurrection time, Hosanna. We say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. King Jesus, we stand with you as one people. God, we stand with the nation of Israel for your promised return. God, we will not turn our back upon you. We will not turn our back upon Israel. Father God, sir, we recognize you as the Lord of hosts and we recognize King Jesus that you are coming again soon soon you are coming again and I love you Lord and I praise you and I thank you sir in Jesus name amen there's a prayer may your name be inscribed in the book of life is amen. your name inscribed in the book of life I know the answer I know the answer is yes if you mean to the best of your ability and repeat this prayer out loud after me. Troy, if you would repeat it after me and you say it when Troy says it, say out loud, Dear God. Dear God. I've made many mistakes in my life. I've made many mistakes in my life. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus I believe the blood of Jesus washes away every one of those mistakes, washes away every one of those mistakes. And I'm clean and I'm clean. It's so good to be clean. It's so good to be clean. And now that I'm clean and now that I'm clean, I boldly say, I boldly say Jesus is my Messiah and Lord Jesus and Savior, is my Messiah and my Messiah and my Lord and my Savior, and my Savior, live inside of me, live inside of me, never leave me, never leave me, give me a greater love for you, give me a greater love for you, and a greater love for my fellow believers, and a greater love for my fellow believers, amen.